Hi, Megan. Good morning. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We are here again at Mavens of Manufacturing, and I have Lindsay Boyle today. She is a marketing specialist and sales specialist for Belco Industries, correct? Correct. <laughs> so, Lindsay, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how, because your, your story is just so interesting to me because you started out as a teacher and a basketball coach, correct? That is correct. Yep. <laughs> so can you can you give us more detail about that and then how you decided to change your career pathway into the manufacturing sector? Yeah, sure. Well, thanks, Megan, for having me on here. I appreciate the opportunity to kind of share my story, even though I really don't like talking about myself. But uh, I heard I get a free T-shirt at the end of this. So I'm, I'm yes. excited about it. <laughs> um, yeah. So my professional journey, work journey started actually as a teacher. I was a secondary high school history teacher uh, here locally where I live in Michigan um, in West Michigan, taught for about 14 and a half years and decided that I wanted to do something else. Um, you know, one thing is I didn't leave education because I was burnt out or tired, even though that happens a lot. Um, I just felt like I had done everything I wanted to do with teaching and schools within schools and coaching and helping kids and having really great relationships. I just felt like maybe there was something else out there for me to do and use my talents for, but I didn't think it was manufacturing uh, at first. So I retired at the end of the 2019 school year. Um, and in that time and space, I was feeling really compelled to want to spend more time with my family. Um, and that led me to reach out to an uncle of mine that I had a relationship with, but don't see often and uh, went out to his house one day and he's uh, working in a, a barn behind his house and I'd never been in there before. And I walk back and there's like tools and cars and rocking music and machinery and sparks <laughs> flying. And I'm like, what is this? You know, I wasn't expecting this in his, you know, that's what he was doing. And uh, so I'm like, hey, man, like, I didn't know you could do all this stuff. And kind of a caveat to this, my uncle's a, a quadriplegic. So he sort of looked at me and he's like, man, just because I'm in a wheelchair doesn't mean I'm an idiot. You know, I'm like, no, I don't. I, don't like that. Like, I just really didn't know you physically could do this. And um, I, uh, I like photography and I like just documenting things in general. I just always have been that way. So I said, hey, I'd love to come out and I just wanna take some photographs. I just think this is really a cool thing. And I think your family should kind of see this and have it. Uh, and he was really reluctant, like, oh, I don't know about that. So I went to go visit my uncle, um, you know, just to go take some pictures and I show up and he like hands me a jacket, a helmet and gloves. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? You know, he's like, oh, you're gonna weld. And I'm like, my uncle's name is Doug. And I'm like, Doug, you know, I, I don't know how to weld. He's like. I know, but you're gonna learn today. <laughs> and so I am someone, by the way, I was wearing like a dress <laughs> and I had uh, like work boots on. Yeah. So I'm like, that's awesome. Awesome. yeah, it was just, everything felt so dangerous about it. And uh, he's like, no, no, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. So I'm out there, I, you know, just retired from teaching. I love learning, doing new things. So I'm game for it. I'm like, all right, this is gonna be cool. We'll learn to weld, you know, what could go wrong. Um, I wasn't very good at it. He had this like little piece of metal and he's like, here, just kind of make some lines on this. And, you know, I'm nervous because there's sparks flying everywhere. But it ended up being really fun. And at the end of it, I said, wait a minute, like I came out here to document you, you know, let's, can I come back again? I love the welding. I want to keep learning how to do it, but I really just want to like kind of share your story. And he's like, oh yeah, sure. That led to a series of visits um, with him. And in that time and space, he's like, hey, we should try to build a rat rod together. And I didn't know what a rat rod, or rat rod was. I had to like Google it and like, what is this thing? Um, and ended, ended up through this journey, you know, continuing to document it. We actually formed a company called We Learn Daily with the acronym WELD as the name. So that was the first okay. thing I did with him was to weld. Uh, so that's how We Learn Daily got started. We can talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but in that time and space of working with my uncle in his barn and documenting and, and capturing this and learning more about tools and welding, uh, we started having conversations about, you know, our family business, um, which is where I work now. Uh, Belco Industries, we are an original equipment manufacturing company. I grew okay. up, was not in the business, didn't really know what we did. Um, it all seemed kind of, I don't know, over my head and dirty and gritty. And I just wasn't something I was interested in. I, you know, pursued education and that was uh, kind of atypical for our family. Most folks work within the business. 
And sort of through building this rat rod and working with my uncle and you know him kind of talking to me about the business, that's how I got started at Belco um, and sort of got into the sales side of it. Uh, so that's how my journey at Belco started. And I can talk a little bit more about our company and what we do uh, later, but that was something that's, I guess, unusual about my story is that I'm in manufacturing and it's our family's business, but I didn't know anything about it. Um, and I didn't leave teaching to go work for our family business. And I didn't have any experience or background in manufacturing. So even though I was working for our family company, it was still like a foreign language to me. I didn't know, you know, what we did, what we built. So I've been with Belco now a year and a half and I'm still learning um, but even just in that year and a half, the things that I've, I've learned and about what we do, but more so about manufacturing in general has been so awesome. I mean, I can't even like, I, I love that you're doing this because I have so much that I want to share with people and, and, uh, you know, what does it mean to work in manufacturing, particularly for a woman? Um, not just, you know, in my space, it's a family business. So I'm one of the few women that works you know, in sales or something outside of just typical office, you know, women, typical work, as most people think women do in, in manufacturing, if they're not an engineer or something. Um, so that sort of how I got there uh, was working with my uncle on this weld, we learned daily project, learning how to weld, becoming less afraid of like, you know, grit and grime and being more interested in what we do in manufacturing. Uh, and, you know, now I'm working in the sales department doing marketing for them. And it's just, you know, been a year and a half and I love it. And I honestly can't, you know, I'm very grateful and thankful that I've had the opportunity to do that. Was your uncle someone that was part of the family business as well, too? Like, what was he doing before you realized that he had this barn in his backyard with all these tools and welding equipment? What was he doing prior to that? Yeah. So he, that's how the conversations got started because he worked for a long time within the family business and then retired. So now he has all this time to, you know, work and play in his barn and build cars and do all cool, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and so, you know, we just kind of had more conversations about what it is that we did and he did sales. He did a lot of some of the things that I did now, certainly more technical. He was an engineer um, and then did sales and things like that and also ran one of our um, subsidiary companies. So Okay. He was able to explain to me a lot of how the business works and how manufacturing works and what we actually did. Uh, so that kind of gave me, I think, a little bit of a push to be like, hey, if he believes that, you know, this is something that I should pursue, you know, it's our family company. I'd, I'd love to have the opportunity to do that. That's so great. Um, this ties in with uh, an event that I actually attended right before our interview. It was... Um, the VIA breakfast, morning breakfast event. And one of the, the main topic, the main theme was mentorship. So he kind of like mm -hmm. accidentally became a mentor for you within yeah. the manufacturing space, which is really cool. And you mentioned this, we learn daily, mm -hmm. which I took the acronym and I'm, I apologize for my mistake. I thought it was a welding publication, which is <laughs> not. So no. can you explain more what uh, weld is in why you started that and some of the things that you're focusing on with that? Yeah, sure. So um, for anyone listening or watching, you can go to welearndaily.com uh, and read a little bit more about our story and the background of it. So working with my uncle, you know, I asked him, I'm like, how do you, I understand that you can do this and that's great, but how do you, like, how did you learn to do this? Um, because even within our company, like I think of my family, not a lot of people work on cars, even though we have this manufacturing business. So like, how did you, how do you know how to do this? So he's like, I watch a lot of YouTube and I'm like, you should have your own YouTube channel. So <laughs> that's actually how we learned daily formed. It was really more, even though I was already out taking pictures and documenting that for our own personal usage. Um, I said, I think there's a bigger audience for this. And I think there are a lot of people that be kind of inspired by your work, plus your family that kind of wants to know more about what you do. I personally love learning, you know, whether it's welding or, you know, learning to play the violin, anything. I love it. So I thought we learn daily is a perfect outlet or platform. And that's really all it is at this point is just for us to share the things that we're doing and hopefully start a conversation or inspire other people to do other, do other things outside of, you know, maybe their comfort zone. Uh, and so right. we learn daily is more just a platform documenting that now. Um, unfortunately with COVID, we were just starting it and COVID hit. And so we had to put a pause on us getting together. 
Um, you know, Doug's been working on stuff and we post things on YouTube. But um, as far as like the core purpose of Weld, I think we've been, you know, we're hoping that we can get back and kind of do some more with that and, and, and be more inclusive of other people. It's not just us putting our stuff out, but, you know, documenting other people's stories. And that's kind of, I think, where we'd like to see it go. So is it more like a tutorial type platform too, where you're you're teaching other people how to weld, or are you just basically sharing your story of, you know, what you're welding and putting together <laughs> in his shop? Yeah. So initially, it was us really documenting us building this rat rod together, which would include welding. Okay. You know, he taught me how to like grind metal down, how to repair and clean an engine. Um, so we did sort of everything with a car. And and by the way, I knew nothing about cars, like like a chassis. I didn't even know what that was. Like now <laughs> I knew nothing, you know, an engine, like getting it to run and cleaning it out and taking it apart and putting it back together. We did all of that. So yeah, it started initially as documenting that journey um, through photography and video and podcasts and just all this whole multimedia thing. That's why it's uh, Weld Media LLC. Um, and then because of COVID, you know, we've each just kind of started doing our own projects. I did a series, for example, golfing, like, because <laughs> it was like, what else can you do during COVID, right? Um, and he right. continued to work on the rat rod and do other projects. So it's not so much a tutorial as it is documenting that process. However, I will say if you go to our YouTube channel, you would see Doug talking about like he's building an elevator lift right now uh, for a house he just bought. So yeah, so he's doing all the fab work and putting it together and designed it. So you could, if you were interested, although he would say this is not a tutorial, uh, if you want to see how he's doing that, you know, that would be a, a space for you to go do that. That's really cool. And I think it's just interesting that you're taking something in your personal life and sharing it because, um, I feel like a lot of people who aren't involved in manufacturing don't realize or they don't think about it, how much stuff we use in our personal lives that involve manufacturing of some sort. Like there's so many parts out there being created to help make our lives easier. And if you if you don't stop and think about it, it, it doesn't really connect with the sector. And it's just, it's just really cool how things are made and turned into things that make our lives easier. And just with the advancements of technology, like I'm, I'm fascinated by it. So yeah. um, same. when you entered into Belco mm -hmm. um, and to remind anyone that's just joining in, you came from the education sector and you moved over to the manufacturing sector. What were some of your main challenges, not really knowing anything about manufacturing when you entered into the family business? A lot. Um, I still think about, you know, I going back to the first day. So Belco, we are an original equipment manufacturer. We make custom equipment for aluminum extrusion handling. We build everything but the press, if you know anything about aluminum extrusion. And we also okay. uh, do paint finishing custom systems. So paint, liquid paint, powder coat, e-coat. We, I always say to people that don't, it's a very niche industry. Like we build the stuff that makes the stuff that you use. Like everything has a coating on it. We build the equipment that does that. And so if you're outside of manufacturing and you don't understand everything that kind of goes into it, you know, we're sort of the industry that nobody thinks about. So when mm -hmm. I sit down in my office, I'm like, <laughs> it's a foreign language to me. You know, I don't know anything, you know, it's everything from combustion and, you know, pumps and gauges of metal and, I could go on and on and on just, I mean, those are simple concepts, but I had no experience or background. So it really felt like I was going to a foreign country every day and trying to navigate that space. But I will also say, you know, people think like, oh, teacher to manufacturing, like what is such a big pivot? Yeah, with the language and the industry part, but the soft skills and just sort of the everyday stuff, particularly in sales and marketing, it's the same thing. I mean, as a teacher, I'm a seller, I'm a marketer, I'm a storyteller, I'm a content creator. I do all of those things in my job now. So nothing there has changed. Um, and so if there's anyone listening that's looking to hire someone in that space, I think teachers or former teachers are really good because we just naturally have done that for you know, our professional careers. Or if there's a teacher out there thinking, how would I fit in manufacturing? Well, you may not be a STEM major, but there are other roles and things that you can do. And you know, like you, Megan, I think manufacturing is so cool when you actually go and see it. Um, it really changes your mind about what the whole industry is and does as a whole. And I think that you see the world differently. I think when I started working at Belco, mm -hmm. when I saw the mechanical process and manufacturing, you just see the world differently and how it operates. And that is something I'm very thankful for, um, you know, to have that because I just feel like I see the world differently. And I think 
I like that you mentioned storyteller because I feel like that's what I'm doing um, and what I have done. So I, I started in manufacturing back in 2008 as an editor. And okay. it was just one of those things where I went on Monster or Indeed and applied for so many jobs. And then someone called me and they were like, hey, do you want to write for us? And I'm like, I don't even know who you are. I don't remember applying for this position, but sure, I'll come in for an interview. And it ended up being for a design engineering publication. And we got to talk to so many different people and I learned so much about so many different products that are out there that I didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. And I was hooked from the get go. And I just, that's one thing that I noticed about manufacturers in particular is if you're from the old school train of thought, they have a really hard time sharing their story. They, they just, they don't know how to, you know, put that out there to people, especially if they think their product isn't exciting or, um, I've heard the term sexy, which really bugs me in terms of technology, but um, they just, you know, well, this is what we make. Why is that exciting? No one cares about it. But it's yeah. like, no, those small components are part of something bigger. And yeah. it's really cool that you're part of that bigger whole. So let's talk about that and why it's important for this small part to be part of this bigger thing. Because if it wasn't, the bigger thing wouldn't work kind of thing. Exactly. Um so in your marketing department, what have been some of the things that you started doing or maybe added to your strategy to help tell Belco's story? Like what are some of the things that, some of the new things that you brought to their marketing to help share their story within your community? Yeah, a lot. Um, so <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, I don't wanna just lump manufacturing as a whole, but in particular the industry that we're in and in, in machinery and things like that and paint industry, uh, extrusion even, um, it is, an, I would say, an older generation there and there's that turnover happening. And so how do you tell that story? How do you make equipment look sexy, right? How do you make that exciting for somebody? Um, one of our strategies obviously has been to enter that digital space. I mean, I'm not that young, but I certainly have experience running social media, understanding storytelling through the digital platform of We Learn Daily and being a teacher and other things that I've done, websites I've created. Um, so when I came in, we had just redone our company's website, belcoind.com. Go see it. There's my plug. Um, and it's a beautiful website. We hired an outside marketing company to do that for us. Um, so my job is really to sort of expand on that. So LinkedIn, um, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, we really try to grow our presence there and just be an active participant. I think that's something for companies. Uh, if you're having the static LinkedIn page or Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter, you know, you, how are you connecting with your customers, right? And in that space, and I think COVID opened up a lot of people's eyes to the importance of that. Um, and I, thankfully we were sort of a step ahead because, you know, I was there for a few months prior to COVID, you know, coming down and could continue that trend. So I think for our company in particular, not to like toot my own horn or our marketing team's horn, um, we really were ahead of that space just because that was our intention before COVID even hit was, you know, expanding our, not just our presence statically on social media, but being uh, active in that space. And you have a great Instagram channel. I was following the, the well Instagram space that you have, and I oh, wow. love Thanks. the photos that you're creating with your uncle. So yeah. anyone that's listening, you should check out our Instagram too, because you are a fantastic photographer as well. Oh, yeah. um, I, <laughs> I think photography and videography and manufacturing is really important. And I think that is something else that you're bringing to the table because you do take really great pictures. So um, yeah. I, I did check that, check that out. Um, so with Ma Mavens of Manufacturing, one of the things that I'm trying to do is recruit younger generations to manufacturing and past discussions that I've had with several manufacturers um, and even with students. Um, one of the questions that I ask, you know, why, what have you heard in terms of people not being attracted to the, the sector? Why aren't people wanting to enter the sector or thinking about it as a career pathway? So at Belco, what are some of the things that you've heard within your community why someone isn't thinking about manufacturing or thinking about some other career pathway outside of manufacturing? 
Oh, um, I actually can speak more from not my experience at Belco. I mean, I know one thing we're doing is we're trying to get, you know, more interns, more bringing that apprenticeship thing back, right? Working within our own local community, uh, the talent pool that we have that exists there and how can we bring them in and whether that's offering more support, more flexibility, helping them with, you know, tech school costs, training, any of that stuff, getting them in our doors and to see what it is that we actually do. Um, but as a teacher, you know, when you're in, in education, there are so many people in education that that's all they've done. And I think that's true with any industry, but there is a really a big misconception of what manufacturing is. And so I would hear colleagues even say like, hey, if you work in manufacturing, that means you're working on the line. You're just a blue collar, like it's, it's sort of degraded, just like we've seen with skills, education and classes sort of go to the wayside. Um, so I think changing that conversation and, and getting teachers would be a great thing to visit manufacturing facilities, not just students. I think getting students there is so important. I think I say to this day, if I had been taken to a manufacturing facility and seen what it is that we build, I think I, I, my career path would have been totally different. I probably would have worked for our family business a lot sooner. But I think getting teachers there who are telling kids like, hey, the, these are career pathways for you. So not just taking students to tech centers, getting those teachers in there to actually see what it is so they can share, you know, what manufacturing actually looks like and encourage kids to make those visits. I think that's a really big thing um, in getting that hook because, you know, it's lacking. And I think that narrative and that discussion is a little off and it has been off for a while. My other thing is that um, I think you mentioned earlier my on LinkedIn, I posted me jumping off a cliff, right? Or I post a golf post or lifting weights. I do all these different things. Yeah, I'm crazy. Um, but I often, <laughs> I often hashtag those woman in manufacturing because I think there's a very powerful tool there for young people in particular to see that a woman who works in manufacturing isn't just, I don't know, whatever they assume that is, um, that a woman in manufacturing is so much more just like a woman doing any job is more than just that job. You know, we're humans, we're people, and that it doesn't have to look like whatever they thought it looked. So that's a very important thing for me uh, to share that, you know, whether it's not to other girls, but to other kids, other boys, men, doesn't matter that, you know, women from all walks of life, you know, can fit in here and work here and do great things. In terms of marketing too, um, are you involved at all in like your recruitment efforts for Balco? Um, what are some of the things, if you are, what are some of the things in that area that you need to adjust or change? Maybe it's the language. I don't know. What are some of the things that need to change in that area for you to attract younger generations? Because I know like we have the Gen Z's and the Gen X's and the millennials. And, you know, sometimes the millennials in particular get a bad rap for, you know, not being excited or boring or lazy sometimes too. Yeah. But I think that, you know, they like challenges and they need to be challenged on a regular basis. And if they're not, then they're going to get bored and they're not going to want to stay where they're at. So mm -hmm. in terms of recruitment, what are some of the things that you're focusing on to put into your strategy to help recruit more of those younger generations into Falco or in your opinion, manufacturing as a whole? Um, you know, I think one of the things is just being open, um, in our facility in particular, we're in a small town and we're right when you come into town, like Belco is one of the first things you see. Um, but a lot of people in our town, including students don't know what we do, or even adults, people have been like, man, until you guys put stuff on social media, I had no idea like what you guys actually did or build or, or now they have questions and they want to know because something looks really cool or they see someone they know work there or a younger person that's interning that just graduated college and has a job. So I think um, keeping the doors open, uh, whether it's bringing students in or young people in to see, to become mentors yourself. Um, I work with the Chemical Coders Association of West Michigan. I recently, uh, I was part of that organization for the past year and that whole mission of that organization is to promote education. Um, so for example, we're, you know, from a regional standpoint, getting out more into tech schools and high schools and, and just trying to be present. I think in particular, I play an important role of that because I don't, 
look, if you will, whether it's I'm a woman or just, I don't look like a typical person working in manufacturing. So I think that's a disruption in itself um, and to get those conversations started. So anything I think a company can do, and that's what we're trying to do at Belco, whether it's on Instagram, you know, like a lot of companies don't have an Instagram page. Well, that's, I say, that's where our young people are at, right? Uh, or their parents are at and they're saying, hey, this is a cool company. You should go work for them or find out what they do, uh, being present in those ways. I um, spoke with a, her name is Nicole Wolter. She's for HM Manufacturing and she actually does TikTok yeah. for some of her manufacturing videos. And yeah. as hard as I try to understand that platform, I suck at it. I'm not good at it at all. It's something that I want to dig deeper into because um, my daughter actually is very good at it with her friends. They do all kinds of crazy videos on there. And I'm always like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And she's like, why do you want to know? And I'm like, because we need short videos for our social media. And this is like the perfect app to yeah. create short, interesting videos. I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> so I'm like getting tutorials for my daughter. And I think, I think that's another thing too, is um, as manufacturing as a whole and some of those traditional companies, we need to kind of step outside of that comfort zone and try some of these newer technologies just to attract the right um, generation. So yeah. Um, oh, I just want to add to that because, you know, I, I, when I came in and talking about marketing and digital marketing or strategy, then that was one of the things was like, well, that's not where our customers are. And I would said, yeah, but that's where the talent is. Like, that's where the next generation is going to be at and they're viewing it and seeing it. So, you know, they want to work for a company that's doing cool stuff. So we need to share that with them. Yeah. So and she's doing the TikTok. I should check the hers out. That's cool. Yeah, it's um she's she's such a fun individual. She she tries everything and she also made it a point to to share that she does hire a lot of millennials and she's like it's it's because they're willing to learn from me and she can also learn from them because they're the generation that taps into a lot of this new stuff. They're going to try it and see where they can take it kind of thing. So, it's that level of mentorship but also the mentors getting mentored by the mentee kind of thing, if that yep. makes sense. Yeah. Um, so in terms of that too, because I've I had a conversation earlier today, as I mentioned about mentorship. How important do you think that is when recruiting younger generations to manufacturing? I, I rolled my eyes because I said huge, because that's how I got into it, right? I mean, <laughs> and, I, and I, the mentor doesn't always have to come from the most expected place. Um, for example, with my uncle who had been retired and out of it, and he's working on this, you know, who who knows something about that, something that might apply to what I do. Um, yeah, I think mentoring is very important. And I also think it's important for anyone in manufacturing to step out and try to open themselves up to conversations or networking or social media or TikTok or whatever to bring those people in uh, and to share with them, you know, how cool manufacturing is and what we do and the importance of it. So. Well, before I let you go today, Lindsay, is there one question that I did not ask you? <sighs> one question? Um, man, you didn't ask me how much I can bench. So I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> kidding. How much can you bench? <laughs> uh, I used to. Let's just say that I haven't been uh, working out as much, but uh, yeah, not as much as I used to. I don't know. I'd have to retest. But at my peak, it was like 155, 160. So that that was pretty good. That, anyway. that is awesome. So for people that are joining in who might be confused by that, so another thing that I really liked about Lindsay is she had an obsession with CrossFit at one point in her life, Absolutely. which I've had for the last five or six years. And um, I used to be really good at it. And then I met my husband and decided to have two more kids. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> I'm, I'm relearning everything. And I just completed the open. Good um, for you. That's awesome. This year. Oh, I wanted, I was cussing the entire time. I hated every minute of it, but I was proud that I finished it. The last workout, I was able to um, clean and jerk 150 pounds. I was super excited That's about that. <laughs> that's probably more than I can do right now. That's great. <laughs> Good for you. So, so Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on Mavens of Manufacturing and sharing your story. I definitely want to keep in touch with you. And as soon as all of COVID stuff um, calms down, I am planning on doing a Mavens of Manufacturing tour of all the facilities of the, the guests that I've had. So I hope I can add that 
Absolutely. Also on my list um, and come see you guys in um, Michigan, right? Yeah. Yep. We're in West Michigan, yeah. small town. Come see us. <laughs> And can you see your link again? Because I feel like I had the wrong link up on the screen. So I apologize for that. So anyone that's interested in Belco, where can they find more information about Belco? Uh, go to Belco, which is B-E-L-C-O-I-N-D.com, Belcoind.com. And you can learn all about our company, uh, which, by the way, was founded by my grandfather back in 1959. So we're 60 that's plus awesome. yeah, in business and I think like so many manufacturers, we're seeing that big turnover. So I'm third generation. My cousin is uh, the vice president of sales, third generation. So uh, we're excited to keep uh, keep the company going and continue to be innovative and industry leaders. Awesome. Congratulations. Okay. And feel free to follow Lindsay on LinkedIn as well and her Instagram page. She has a ton of amazing pictures on there. Like she mentioned before, she's not just a woman in manufacturing. She does all sorts of things and she ties that in with Belco marketing because I think you hit the nail on the head. It is important to show people that, you know, manufacturing has so many different sides of it and there's so many opportunities. It's not dirty, dark and dull like the misconception yep. is. There's a lot of new things happening and it's particularly in terms of automation and technology. So yep. um, thank you again for sharing your story. For Thank all you. those that joined it, oh, before I go, there's a comment on here. Oh, Gwen Bradley said, nice job, Lindsay. <laughs> Thanks, Gwen. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm getting used to this whole technology platform, so if I'm a little slow, I do apologize. But for everyone out there who joined us today, thank you again. We have another great episode next week, and I hope to see you guys there. Have a great weekend, you guys. Thanks, Megan. Bye, Liz. <laughs> This has been another episode of Mavens of Manufacturing. Subscribe for more and make sure to tune in next time.